you fill this place, Lord, you will fill this place with your people, oh Lord, with people even ready to accept you. Lord, we are, we are welcoming people from all over the place, Lord. You will bring them here. You will bring them here. We believe that, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's why they're saying that. 
And that also gives them an excuse. So many sinners are still sinning. And they're going to continue to sin. And they have no intention of stopping. Is that right? Is that a good thing? No. Because Christ said you must repent. You must repent to enter the kingdom of God. So there's various things we need to tell sinners. First of all, before we get into the instruction, we need to know that there are sinners and there are Christians. And what is a Christian? A Christian is somebody who has been saved from his sins. So one of the correct instructions for a sinner is repent. There's no secret in today's message. It's everything that we already know. So what will we instruct a sinner to do? Will we instruct a sinner that they must now read their Bible? It might help, but it's not going to save them until they repent. For some people, it depends on the person. For some people, reading the Bible will be their repentance because they don't read it. So now they're reading it. So that's their repentance. So when I began to study, what we have is we have, we have today's church and we have a historical church. And the, there's news for you today is that they're not the same. Today's church does not follow what the historical church is saying. Now, before you're concerned about me, I'm talking about people who are the founders of the denominations today. The Methodist church. The, the Methodist church today is not doing what John Wesley did. Is that right? In many Methodist churches, they have homosexuals now today in London. So, they, John Wesley was not agreeing with homosexuality. So, why are you a Methodist like that? Even in the Methodists, they have Boy Scouts. And we're not supposed to be Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. They have Freemasonry. Well, John Wesley did not, did not approve of that. But we are not Methodists. What about the Baptists? Maybe their founders used the King James Bible. So you Baptists, why are you not using a King James Bible? That's a, another thing. There's many denominations today and many churches are built on a revival which happened approximately getting nearly 200 years ago. I'm talking about the church today compared with 200 years ago. Who was there 200 years ago? 150 years ago. Charles Spurgeon. Charles Finney. D.L. Moody. William Booth. If you don't know these names, then do some homework. William Booth, Salvation Army. So, Baptist was Charles Spurgeon. And Charles Finney, Presbyterian. Congregational. And Kamakop comes out of that line of Presbyterian churches. Even the man who started Kamakop in Canada experienced revival. The founder of Kamakop, listen to me, you Kamakop. Are you following what your founder did? First of all, take up a King James Bible. If you haven't used one, then get back to this. Don't use the I know which, which ones they like the most. English Standard Version. ESV. NIV. Don't use that. Okay, so another thing I noticed. So I'm reading some material from people written 150 years ago. If you want to get back to the truth, begin to pick up those books. Throw away your Rick Warren books. Because Rick Warren is still alive, and he's he's bringing a he's bringing a seeker-friendly gospel that is not the gospel of 150 years ago. Max Lucado, financial advice. Financial advising. I know we are, now the excuse people are saying is we are now living in a different world to 150 years ago. So you need something which is more. No. 
God's doctrine does not change. God does not change. The Bible does not change. Sinners are still sinners today as they were 150 years ago. Jesus still says to rich men, take your possessions and sell them. What does it mean? Does it mean go and walk homeless on the street? No, it means take your money. Instead of buying a bigger house, a bigger car, bring it to the house of God. Tie your money. That's what it means. So here, first of all, I'm reading a book written 150 years ago. And this is what we should be reading. We are singing hymns. All of the hymns were written over 150 years ago. They don't write hymns anymore. They don't want to sing it. They want to sing rock, rock and roll music. So as I'm reading this book written 150 years ago, I begin to see some terminology which they are not using today. That's why I'm saying today's church is different. When I read this, I was a member of a Pentecostal church, which was an Elim Pentecostal church. It could be any Pentecostal. It could be an Assemblies of God. And I didn't understand what he means when he says sinners. I was thinking, does he mean people who are unsaved? So today the terminology, instead of calling people sinners, they say the unsaved, which is biblical, but they are also sinners. The reason they don't use the word sinners is because they don't want to be in the unsaved group. They say, yes, I know I'm a sinner, but I'm saved. I'm a sinner, but I'm saved. And they are also sinners, but they are unsaved. You see the terminology? The problem is now that everybody can be a sinner. You're just saved or you're unsaved. You understand? So being saved means that you are saved from your sins. You're not a sinner. That's the first definition which needs to come back. So when I began to read this book, I was confused because I'm thinking, who are sinners? Because I thought I'm a sinner. So he's saying that we must instruct sinners, but does that mean I'm also a sinner? So what it is, a sinner can be somebody who was never saved. A sinner can also be somebody who is backslidden, somebody who professes Christianity. So that was another term I learned, which was not used today. A professor of religion. What is a professor? Somebody who says they are a Christian. Now today in the church they automatically assume that you are, you are going to heaven if you say you're a Christian. Of course you're going to heaven because you're a Christian. In the Philippines everybody's a Christian. Is that right? They say they are. That means they are professors of Christianity, but it doesn't mean that God accepts them. You see? So I saw that terminology. I thought, but I, hang on, how can there be a professor? Isn't it a Christian already? But it's just, he's calling it just a professor of religion, not a professor in university. Not that kind of pro professor. means someone who says something. You profess that you are Christian. So then I began to say, okay, so. That means there can be people who say they are Christians, but are not really on their way to heaven. Does that agree with the Bible? Do you think it agrees? Christ said it many times. There will be people who say, Lord, Lord, and they do not do my work. We can go there to Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. Many will say to me in that day, which day is that? Let's see. This is the day when Jesus returns, the day of judgment. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day. So I'm telling you, there is a day. Today, everything is morning, lunchtime, evening, bed. Wake up, morning. But there is coming a day when all of that will stop. Do you believe it? He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? You see, these are professors. They are saying that they are speaking in Jesus' name. 
and in thy name have done have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works they didn't just say it they even did they did the work and then Christ said in verse 23 then will I profess unto you I never knew you isn't that interesting Christ can say to people who say I am born again they, he can say I never knew you so let's make sure that we are really born again here it says I never knew you and his sentence depart from me ye that work iniquity so these he can say to people who are professing Christian even if you're a member have you got a membership certificate Christ can say I never knew you all of the external acts signing up for membership even being water baptized Christ can say, I never knew you. Imagine, somebody who's water baptized, someone even who's in the praise and worship team, someone who's even preaching. Rick Warren is preaching another gospel. You're saying there's only one gospel. No, there's another gospel. If you turn to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Chapter 12. Sorry. This is 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians. There is another gospel here. Yes, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom you have, we, have, we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Look at the first one. He that cometh to you preacheth another Jesus. In the Philippines, they're preaching another Jesus. The one on the crucifix. The one in the picture with the blonde hair. The one that, that has that face. That you say, oh, that's Jesus. Have you recognized Jesus' photograph? Can you recognize him? Have you seen his ID? <laughs> you see that picture? You know that picture? Yes. That is not Jesus. Was anybody, did they have cameras in that day? Did they photograph Jesus? That is not Jesus. That is to take people to another Jesus. There's many other Jesus. Even the priest says he's Jesus. The priest, the Roman Catholic priest, that's why he says, I will forgive your sins. He's another Jesus. Even the Santa Nina doll, which is famous in the Philippines, that puppet, that is another Jesus. So there is also another Jesus now. There's also another spirit. If you receive another spirit. So there's three things here. Another Jesus, which we have talked about. Another spirit which is the ecumenical movement. You're making friends with the devil if you are having fellowship with people who believe in another Jesus. It's another spirit, do you agree? Thirdly, another gospel, another message, another doctrine. It is a doctrine of now, the, now the way that the Antichrist is moving because the Antichrist is always moving, he's always adapting, he's always like a chameleon, he's always, what is his now, his movements now is the seeker-friendly movement, the mega church movement, the prosperity gospel movement, it's all in that one category. So, when you go to one of these seeker-friendly churches, how do you recognize a seeker-friendly church? 
Do you have any idea how you recognize it? Number one, they are not talking about sinners. Are they talking about sinners? Or are they talking about your purpose driven life? They, they said that the gospel is uh, sense, sensual. You would not believe that there was one sinner in their church because you don't know what that is. You won't hear a definition. A sinner is what we talked about at the beginning. Those sins are mentioned already. What was the ones we were doing today? We we're talking about talking about not being converted. You know, in those seeker-friendly churches, people are not converted. Because to be converted, you need what? You need to know that you're a sinner. Because what is conversion? Conversion means you have changed from being a sinner to being a saint. Is it right? So, in those churches, you, there's not even one convert. Maybe there are backsliders there. Maybe people come from other church because it's big. Like Pastora Fair, she came to one big church in Manila because, but she was saved already. But because of all of the people and the flashy music and the people, you want to go there. So maybe there's backsliders there, but there's no new converts. Whatever they are, they have a false religion. Okay, so what do we say to sinners? This is very important, step by step. We have to teach sinners. First of all, we have to know what sinners are. And I spent time on that because even today we do not even know what sinners are. Sinners are people who are committing these sins. They're living in sin and they are ignorant of the gospel. So someone who denies Jesus Christ automatically is a sinner. Someone who says, I don't follow Jesus, Jesus is not true. That's automatically a sinner. Number two sinner. The ones who say that they are in Jesus, in Christ, but they are backslidden. They're still living in sin. So, they also need instruction. You agree? Or you're just going to leave them. You're going to leave them in the purpose-driven church and lifestyle. Or are you going to try if there's if there's a hope? They also need instruction. Okay, so first of all, let's look at let's look at this. And directions to sinners. Right, so today, today, there's a very common idea that people are allowed to have their own experience. Is that right? You can't give more directions. Because for me, it's like this. But for you, it might be like that. Then you can't give any direction. You can't say, turn left, turn right. There's only one destination. People have said there's many destinations. What do they call that today? They call that critical thinking. Okay. So, now, someone asked the question to Paul. What shall I do to be saved? That's found in Acts chapter 16, verse 30. That was done by the Philippian jailer. So this is a total unbeliever. Not in the church, because there was no church at that time. Acts 16 verse 13. So, 16 verse 30. So the jailer brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? If somebody asks you this question, they are already at the point where they are ready for the gospel. This man was in a point where he's ready. That is called conviction. He's in a convicted state. Or people are in a careless state. That's another thing. I was beginning to learn all of these definitions. So there's also careless sinner. And there's convicted sinner. So we try to find who? The convicted ones. Because the careless ones, you can talk to them for five years, ten years. They will not even listen. 
The convicted one are the ones that God is working with. You see? The Spirit of God knows the hearts of man and knows who should be given an opportunity. Everybody, of course, is given an opportunity, but most of them have rejected it. So the Spirit of God ceases to strive, you see? So that is a careless sinner. You can't talk to a careless sinner. The only way you can talk to them is to try and awaken them. We try to awaken a careless sinner by bringing something that will do what? Remember when someone is in the hospital and they are flat lying. They're on the dead bed. What do they do? Take the charge. They need shock treatment. If you want to awaken someone, you need shock treatment. It's no use preaching a loud gospel that, oh, God loves everyone. That person is dead. Oh, God's going to love you. No, they need shock treatment. <laughs> so we need a message like that. You agree? <laughs> to waken. Now, I'm talking about awakening sinners. But if they're already awake, they don't need any more shock. Is that right? Because you might even kill them again if you shock them too much. So now... We are talking about how you instruct them. At that point, they need certain things to tell them. The proper thing to say. Now, first of all, if somebody says to you, what must I do to be saved? That is a critical moment because it's going to determine eternity. Is that right? That is a critical moment. What does it mean, a critical moment? It's a critical moment because at that point, if they take a wrong instruction, they might fall off the cliff. This is like somebody is standing on a cliff. You know a cliff? He's standing on the edge of a cliff and he's blind. And he's saying, which way must I go? To you. And you are standing there and you can see. Do I turn left or do I turn right? He's, he's vulnerable, you understand? He's vulnerable. So the person asking this question, what must I do to be saved? It's like someone on the top of the cliff. They may never get that opportunity again. Never. May never. Because the Bible says the Spirit of God ceases to strive. You can go deal with those people there. They're, 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 they can bring it in. It says the spirit of God see, the spirit of God ceases to strive. So that particular moment, that moment that they ask the question, what must I do to be saved? is critical. You see, all these people, they're not asking. They're not asking the question because they are not convicted. Do you agree with me? So you see, it becomes very important now to distinguish. What is an awakened sinner and what is a careless sinner? You, you believe it's important? You come across them all the time. In fact, you know by intuition, I don't want to preach to them anymore. There's some people that you don't preach to. Is that right? Even in your own family, you don't even bother. You already know the principle because you can see that some of them, they will never be awakened. Never. You can try five years, ten years. Don't waste your time. And you know, don't waste your time. Because God's Spirit is not working on them. But there are some people. You believe there are some people? There was one in Philippi. Philippi is a big city. Maybe as big as Stava. And how did they find him? They went to jail. <laughs> they were not planning to look for people in jail. But they went there because they were arrested. So God was actually guiding them to the person. Do you see that? In the way they didn't want. Do you want to go to prison? <laughs> That's why whenever everything is falling apart, you must say, what is God doing? Where is God taking me? Is that right? Because God is taking you to somewhere. So now they're in the stocks and they're singing and praising God. 
and then suddenly the stocks break open. This is the opportunity. The man comes and says, what must I do to you? He was the first. Was it the first? He was actually the second convert because Lydia was the first one. So, and his whole household, not just him. That means God had chosen these people. He had predestined them. So Paul was not going to a prison. He was just in the marketplace preaching. But he finds himself with the person God has ordained. So the Spirit is working with this man. So when somebody asks you, what must I do to be saved? That's the person. What happens? So the first thing is, we should not tell them to do something that will not make them a Christian. Many people can read a Bible. It doesn't make them a Christian. So if someone comes and says, what must I do to be saved? You say, read a Bible. No, that's not the right instruction. Sing some worship. No, that's not. Pray. No. What is the first thing that they need to be told? Believe in the Lord Jesus. Yes. So there's many different directions. And it depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to Jews, you say, believe in the Lord Jesus. If you're talking to Muslims, you say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because for them to believe in Jesus is going to be a big change. Huh? For a Muslim to say, I believe in Jesus, that will be huge, isn't it? So the instruction to a Muslim would be believe in the Lord Jesus. To a Roman Catholic, would you say believe in the Lord Jesus? He first needs to know that what is this Jesus? Who is Jesus? So, so there are different instructions. You're correct. One, firstly, is what you've always said. Repent. That was the first thing that Jesus said, isn't it? He's talking about the lifestyle. The life that you're living. Change. So we need to understand what repentance is. Because people are saying that they are repenting, but actually they're not. Okay? Because there's a lot of a lot of false ideas about repentance. It, uh, repentance implies that you have changed your mind about sin, that you you are willing to change your life about that sin. Number two instruction, believe the gospel. What is the gospel? Now you need to have already explained it. If you say to someone, believe the gospel, they might be thinking of a Catholic gospel. But if you've explained to the Catholic what the gospel is, there must be no other gods. There must be only Jesus. There can't be saints. Then you say, you believe. Believe the gospel, and that will bring them to Christ. Careless sinners, of course, will not believe. Another direction to give is give your heart to God. Give your heart to God. Give your heart to God. What does it mean? People say, I don't know how to give my heart. You know how to give your heart to your wife. What does it mean to give your heart to your husband? Your wife. What does it mean to give your heart to your husband? It means uh, Be married. Give your heart to somebody. We give are, your heart. We are the bride of Christ. So be, be married. Give your heart to somebody. Give your heart. If you have a relationship, give your heart. Means what? Commitment. Means, yes, it means care. Begin to care for that person. We give your heart to somebody. What does it mean? When you, a heart is like it's the most important part, you give that to somebody. You're, you're saying that your life is theirs. Their life is yours. That means you're giving your heart. That is a good instruction to give to sinners. You're giving your heart to God. If you explain, it means you're giving your life to Him. You're giving... The most important thing is you, and you're giving that to God. That is a good instruction. Another instruction is to confess and to forsake your sins, which is what we have been saying. Confess and forsake. Another one is 
in the days of Joshua, choose who you will serve. Choose who you will serve today. It's another good one for the Catholics. Instead of saying, believe in Jesus. Choose who you will serve. Will you serve Jesus? Or you will, will you serve the saints? Is that right? Will you serve Jesus or will you serve Mary? Choose. Is it a good question? Choose who you will serve. Jesus or Mary? Catholics will say, I am going to continue to serve Jesus. That Jesus is the only mediator. Do you believe that? Believe the gospel. Those are the right instructions. Okay, good. So let us close in prayer. Would you like to pray for us and also pray for the food? Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand what sin. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for help us, helping us to understand what sin really is. Yes. Lord, Sometimes we don't know. We just we just do as what we think is good yes. and is right. But maybe we are wrong, mm -hmm. and we are maybe our what what we believe is wrong, yes. and therefore we can also be uh, called a sinner because a sinner doesn't believe and doesn't put his heart unto Jesus. That's why we are here, Lord, to help people to understand that there is only one, um, only one way for a sinner to be saved, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus, uh, as I was saying, Jesus of the Bible, Jesus who came down from from heaven to earth, as what we are say, saying a while ago, came down from heaven to earth. And to do and who died for us and who also uh, was risen from the dead there is no other God like that yes. and not just that the, uh, some other some other Christians they say they are Christians but their their Jesus is still that is, is still dead Lord we are we are Christians whose Christ is alive. Yes. And this is the real question because there are no, no Christianity without uh, Jesus' resurrection. Yes. So we, we think we, we, there is no salvation. The salvation is not complete without Jesus' resurrection. Without Jesus being alive and now is reigning in, in heaven. And Lord, that is the Jesus we are bringing to the people. Lord, I believe that there are uh, people somewhere here who is ready to find that Jesus that we are we that we are bringing to them. And I pray, Lord, that you bring them to us. Um, uh, I believe that this is a, a very chance for us to stir the ground. To, to stir even the, the spiritual atmosphere of this uh, city, of Davao City. Maybe there are a lot of uh, uh, a, lot, a, a lot of cults that are here that well, we can see with people. That, that is another Jesus. And that is not Jesus of the Bible. And uh, there are also some, even uh, Christians are just becoming very lenient in in their in, in their uh, ways because they want to bring them to love but sometimes um, some somebody who is rebellious needs also some some hitting some some uh, some uh, discipline and therefore that discipline not normally doesn't is is not always nice for a person to hear. Lord, maybe they also need some some help, some discipline, because they're becoming very lenient nowadays. And 
Satan, you cannot believe me and when Satan is doing double time, uh, especially now that it, he knows that he only but a short he, he knows that he only but only have a short time here on earth, we cannot believe him. We should be very, very vigilant and that we that, that we will not allow Satan to even come near our our place, our gate. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm 
Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God we are here again. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm chapter 21. Psalm chapter 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice! Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips, Selah. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusted in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Thy hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them a fire as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so we will sing and praise thy power. Amen. We will sing and praise the power of our God. Are you ready to worship God today? Let's yes. Heavenly Father, we are here again to worship you. We thank you for the, this uh, this place that you have given us it's another upper room that you have given us and therefore we can we, we can um, worship you and praise you today because you are our God you are our strength you are our Savior in Jesus name Amen Eleven, we are in 111, being involved in wives' fables. First Timothy 4 7. First Timothy four seven. But refuse to feign an old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So those are superstitious beliefs. 
112. Contention or strife. Proverbs 17, 14. The beginning of strife is as when one let out water, therefore leave off contention before it be met with. Leave off meaning you get rid of. Contention or discontention is fight. The Bible says do not fight. One hundred thirteen, not being converted, perish. Matthew eighteen three. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's very clear here that a person needs to be converted. What is the meaning of converted? Converted not of any other religion, but of Christianity. Because only in Christianity that there is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of the Bible. Only in Christianity is salvation. Only in Christianity is salvation. Because Chris, Christians proclaim the salvation of Jesus Christ. Salvation through Jesus Christ alone. So if you believe that you are converted, to Christianity, meaning you are converted to following Jesus Christ alone. That's why we are only Jesus Church. And that means if you if you don't have if you cannot be converted and if you don't want to be converted, therefore you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus is in heaven and we need somebody that is there for us to go to heaven. Somebody to open the door for us to enter heaven. One hundred fourteen despising correction. Hebrews twelve five. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children, as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chasing of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So we need God's rebuke if we are doing something that's bad. When when I when when I say when I when I say to you you should you should not do that and you're doing it, what will I do? Sometimes I I, I smack. God also does that to us, to his children. Because we don't listen to God, then we get in danger. When you don't listen to mommy and daddy, you get in danger. That's why you listen. And you, so that if you but if you listen, if you listen, you don't you are always safe. When we also listen to God, we will always be safe. And God won't be angry at us. One hundred fifteen refusing correction. Jeremiah five three and
O Lord, art not thine, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have not, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, Surely these are cruel, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. Refuse correction, so somebody is is correcting you of the things that are wrong. You just accept it, I always say. Accept it and make it right. One hundred sixteen. Refuse to separate from false counsel. Proverbs nineteen twenty seven. from the words of knowledge. Don't listen to bad advice. Don't listen to others that's not speaking good. Listen to those or don't copy those that are bad. Copy those that are good, or you start you start doing good, and people will copy you. Seeking counsel that is not of God. Isaiah thirty-one. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That's very bad. This is ecumenical. And this is what is happening to us. We those who are getting inside the ecumenical movement are rebellious children. They take counsel, but not of God. And cover, they have the covering of, of other spirit, not of God. And they are adding sin to sin. This is a good, a very clear, uh, a very clear illust uh, a verse related to ecumenical movement. False anointing. False anointing. Upside down top. So, people of God, wake up! Wake up! Yes, we're going to have people of God here. Yes. And we're going to wake them up. Yes, wake up. 118 turning to false counsel or fables. Second Timothy 4 4. Yes. 
For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received. A second thing to say. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fable. Now the preachers of the truth are are the ones that be being rejected, and they turn from a theological forum. That is end from the box of uh, Harvard Harvard uh, scholar doesn't mean that they have the Holy Spirit. They might have be a Harvard scholar but they don't have they that doesn't guarantee that they have the Holy Spirit. Learn from the Bible. Um, walking in counsel of a saint, Psalm 101. Psalm 101. So the unsaved are giving advice yes. to the saint. people of God. Yes. That is a sin. Yes, sin to sin. And a different covering. Cover. Covering of not God, of other spirit, not of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the, the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the right in the seat of the scornful. So don't be deceived. Don't listen to false first of all, false religion. Yes. Unsaved. Unsaved. That the advice of uns, of the unsaved is will is deceitful. That is there. Proverbs twelve five. Let's see that's, Proverbs twelve five. That's why the Catholics are unsaved. Yes, cannot be together with. So them. Catholics we must not listen to their advice or yes. their doctrine. Yes, that's why we have this comment to give people twelve five. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. So they might be the, the reason why we cannot be in the ecumenical movement is because there is a what you call theological forum that they are mixing the 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 their idea the Ecumenical is Catholic. Their idea is mixing to the idea of the real church. So if we are mixed up, if we are mixing with their idea, that means we are mixing up some truth, only some truth, not the whole not the whole truth, truth that they can only accept.
Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. So, yes, being courteous, meaning be a uh, being helpful, being good, being kind. We're going to pray. Father, thank you for this time. We thank you for sending us here. We thank you for all the great things that you're going to do here in our midst. Thank you that we have chairs. We can even have another row of having maybe one, two, three, five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen people plus us. So that is a great opportunity. Oh God, we invite your Holy Spirit. We invite you to be with us in our worship time, Lord Jesus. We invite you to be here as we praise your name, as we worship your name, Lord. As we give you the glory today. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Are you ready to praise the Lord?
Thank you, Lord. You're the one who lives in me. For in him we live and move and have our being, being 
as certain also of your own poets have said, for we also have his offspring. Mm -hmm. 